Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technology. I'm your host, Orst, and today we con we're continuing our Postman Advanced series with Postman Monitors. Prior to this, we looked at Postman Mock Server, which is a static web server that allows you to send or reply with static API responses that really benefits you in terms of debugging and handing off APIs to front-end developers so that application development can continue. If you want to check that video out, you can go ahead and, and click that to the right of me. Now, if you're landing on this web uh, video and you're just getting started with Postman, I would recommend the Introduction to Postman series, which also you could find to the right of me. So briefly to describe what a Postman monitor is, it's a web client that allows you to send scheduled API calls to the deployed APIs that you've created. What this does is it allows you to test them at a regular cadence and obtain statistics on their performance. So it really gives, goes to show how well your APIs are doing out in the wild and let alone also provides the ability to see or make calls from different regions in the globe that gives you an idea of what the response and the performance would be like if someone from say Europe was calling your APIs or someone from Asia was calling your APIs or your front end application and really can show you what places you may need to tune or if you need to deploy in different parts of the world. To get started, there are three ways we can create a Postman monitor. One is through the new button at the top right hand corner here. Another is through the collection itself with, by clicking the ellipses. And then lastly, there's another way you can create it through the web interface as well. They all look the same in terms of the, the features they provide or the settings. The Postman web one will just look slightly different, but it again provides the same options that allow you to create a, a monitor. To get started, we're gonna go ahead and click these ellipses here. And we're gonna do monitor collection. Here, we can see it already auto-populates information on that collection. But again, if you had just clicked new or have done it through Postman web, you'll see here that this is the first page you get, which is choosing your collection or creating a new API on the fly. And it'll create a collection for you, just as we had seen in Postman mock server. The first option here is just to name the collection. And in this case, we're just gonna call it Postman Echo YouTube. Below it, we have the version tag, which just goes to show what version of the API you're using. So if you're on a, a current version, which will just be you know the most up-to-date, or if you have a different version tag, you can set that here. Below it, we have the environment option, and that's just in case your Postman uh, API collection uses an environment. Generally, you probably will use this. However, in, in my case, Postman Echo, I do not need uh, the environment to complete this monitor. Then below, we have what I'd say is the most important part of Postman Monitor, which is the monitor run frequency. This allows us to choose uh, something from a bi-weekly or a weekly timer all the way down to a a minute timer so at the least we can do a once a week um, scheduled uh, API execution or we can do at the most every five minutes so you see we have also an hourly timer if we only want to do it on an hourly basis per day and then the minute timer which you can see is up to five minutes so for us we're gonna go ahead and do a hourly timer so we're gonna have it set well, once every two hours Below, you see we have the region here, as uh, I had mentioned previously. And this allows us to choose where our APIs will be called from. As you can see, it's a checkbox option, so we can really see which um, locations we want to choose, and it doesn't just have to be one. We could do all of them, or we could just do one of them, as you can see. Lastly, under additional preferences, we have a few other things. 
we have uh, email notifications on run failures or errors. So this does mean that it will execute your Postman pre-request and test scripts. And so if any tests fail, we will get an email notification on that here. Below it, we have the request timeout. And so this is, for example, if your collection or your API is taking too long to respond, in this case, 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds, it will automatically time out the request and that would be a failure. Below it, we have the request delay. So if you have multiple requests in your collection, as do I, it will delay the execution of the next collection by this much time. So by default, it's set to zero milliseconds, but you could set it to you know, 1,000, 2,000, whatever is uh, appropriate for your, your collection here. Here we have do not follow redirects. So this is in the sense that if you have a specific API call where you're looking to get a redirect back, this will help show that so that you can see that you are in fact receiving that uh, redirect. And lastly, we have is to disable SSL validation. This is generally at the beginning uh, and many times used uh, when just starting uh, an API. What this does is it allows us to shut off the SSL validation, such as if you had not put a certificate on your server and it will not check to see if SSL is on because otherwise if it does and it's not there, it will send a failure. And lastly, just a few more things to note. Um, within creating our collections, there are some stipulations. Um, I would encourage you to look at the Postman documentation that I'll have in the link below uh, that describes more about these stipulations, but some um, general things is that you are able to do uh, use environments and variables, as you can see here, you are able to consume them. However, what will not work is persistence. So if you are trying to save a variable to the environment, through the monitor, it will not save it. Um, that's just you know part of the way Postman Monitor works. And there are ways you can work around that, such as scripting out other API calls to send that data over uh, and save it. So in the case of where you have uh, dependencies of prior API responses that lead into the request body of the next API within the collection, you can do um, persistence through other means and that allow you to save that so that you can continue running your Postman monitor in the proper fashion. And then on the last note, since this is a, a, a since this does use API calls, it will consume the allotment that you have of API calls per month. So as a Postman user, uh, a free user, we only have 1000 API calls that we can use. And so in my case, since there are six APIs in here and it's running on a two hour basis, that means it runs 12 times a day and 12 times six is 72. So that we know every day, this will consume 72 API calls. So we're gonna go ahead and click create. And then once we click create, we see we have some uh, information here regarding the monitor. We can check its status on the web dashboard. We can learn how to add more requests to this collection which you've seen in the collection video, and adding uh, custom tests to a request, which again, you can look at the uh, Postman pre-request and test script video that I made that will show you more on how to do that. So we're gonna click uh, the web dashboard here. And as you'll see, it sends you right to the monitor. And here, this is where we get to re review those statistics and those results that we get from the Postman monitor. Since we just made it and it hasn't run yet, we will not see any information. However, if we want to get started, you can go ahead and click the run button here and we'll uh, populate this with uh, response data and response statistics here. However, in, uh, in the sense of uh, expediency uh, and just to make this easier, I've already created a Postman monitor a few days ago and I let it run so that we can get a, a good set of data to uh, check out. And that's what you see here in this tab for Postman Echo Test. So here is the first thing you see when we go ahead and click that web dashboard after we've had a few re requests run. And so we start off with a monitor summary. And on the left axis here of this, of this graph, we have the seconds that it took to perform. And then on the bottom here, we have at what time these calls performed. So these are all in blocked chunks. 
So this line here is just an average of, or an aggregate of the response times that we saw. So as you can see, we have a failed percentage and an average response time within here. But let's say you wanna see a little bit more about a certain request. Well, what you can do is you can click on something like patch request, and here we get to view the data just for the patch request. Or with a delete request, you can view that data here too, and really see the differences of how long each request takes to execute. Additionally, uh, if you wanna see all the requests separated out by different lines, and now that we're in the re we're request split tab, you can click all requests again, and you can see all of these line graphs that show you all that data. And again, so we have the region drop down here at the top right. So if you had done more than one region, such as in Asia or, or Europe, I think in the United Kingdom was an option, we can click and filter based on that region option. And so if you want to see more data, though, on, say, what tests passed and what tests failed and what was all executed during this run, you can go ahead and click this bar graph here. And as you see below, it drops down the console, or excuse me, Postman runner-like output that you would normally see. So here at the top, we have pass and fail tests. The green shows whatever just passed, and the red shows what just failed. So luckily nothing did. And so now going back here to the, uh, the green option or what has passed, We'll get to see the same information in Postman Runner. Um, you could check that video out uh, again to uh, above me. I have a link to that. You'll see that we did get a response of OK or a response status code. And then additionally, the response body had the JSON with request queries that we are normally look for in this test or in this request. So here is that uh, HTTP status code that we get. Uh, uh, to the right of it, we see the response time and how long it took to come back. And then all the way to the right is the response uh, response size. Uh, in this case, 462 bytes, we get that information. And so if you also wanna see the console log, you can see that right here by clicking console log. And we get to see more information on what actually was sent through and what we got back. So when I made this collection or I copied it and I modified it in a prior video, I did output the response, and I, since I still left that, it actually showed up here. So you can see the uh, this is the response body of the of the I believe the second request here, where we have Postman Echo Fubar, and you can see that we got the authenticated true response here. And so it's really useful, especially if you're running to an issue here in the monitor. You can run or execute uh, these requests and log any responses to the console log, and this allow you to debug and see what happened and maybe why your request had failed, given that you are outputting the correct information to help debug that. And so what's also really useful in this is the actual email that you will get out of this. So not only do you get an email when a request fails, if you had selected that option as an additional preference, but also you'll get a email from Postman Monitors as a daily summary of how all of your executions performed in that one day. And so I'll scroll to the right here. And we can see yeah, we have an email on uh, Postman Monitor's daily summary. So here we have our total monitors, our healthy monitors, and our average success rate of those monitors. So as you can see, Postman Echo uh, does a really good job at being performant. And I'd imagine uh, Postman being the company that it is, and since they're all about APIs, you know, they would be sure to do that. And then in here, you could see on the, below that the performance of each of your monitors. So if we had more than one, we would see that here. Um, here we just have Postman Echo and we have an average success rate of 100%. And we can additionally see to the right the average response time. And what's nice is you actually get to see a little delta as to, hey, did your response times improve or did they actually get worse? And in this case, we see that for this day period, we did actually have a decrease in performance of an average of nine milliseconds.
Now we'll go back to our, our Postman Monitor page here. And really that covers everything that you would need to know on Postman Monitors. It's a, a really good way to just keep tabs on how everything is going within your environment. I would definitely suggest, again, you read the documentation to get more information on some of those stipulations and things you just need to know. Um, additionally, if you're using, as a, as a caveat, some uh, of the Postman API calls on its own, that will also go against your licensing. So that's just something to keep in mind so that you do not run out of API calls and by whatever day, um, let's say this monitor runs and you're out of uh, your allotment of your licensing, then it will not continue to run those Postman monitor calls. It's just something to keep in mind. So in the next video, what we're going to do is look at Postman Newman. It is an open source uh, community tool, uh, community driven and actually community developed within Postman that allows you to basically do the same thing that you would do in Postman Runner, but you can do it in a, in a headless version by running it through a, a terminal or a, a console if you're on Windows. So I'd like to thank you for joining me uh, on this uh, journey with uh, Postman. If you like this video and you like this content and you're really looking forward to uh, hearing more about Postman, I'd give it a, a thumbs up. And again, if you're really interested in learning more about IT tools and technologies and in future videos where we'll cover different parts of, of uh, IT tools available, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And to be sure that you're notified, click the bell. Thanks again, guys. And I'll see you in the next video with Postman Newman.